Good morning and welcome to Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. And for this edition, we're going to dive back into the fixed income markets with Dan Husher. He's the Executive Director of Global Fixed Income Structured Products at IHS Market. Thank you very much for joining us at Market Site. So we're going to look at the liquidity and SEC rule. And before we get into the dynamics of that, what is that? Sure. Well, the, uh, the liquidity rule will require open-ended funds to essentially bucket their assets into four buckets, highly liquid, moderately liquid, less liquid, and illiquid securities. Right. And how does that impact, impact the fixed income market? Is this, is this a rule that is intact, if you will? Sure. So what really the intent of the rule is to ensure that uh, shareholders who are redeeming in the fund can actually meet the redemptions of the fund. Um, so having a sufficient liquidity profile within the fund ensures that they'll be able to meet redemptions. And that's really kind of at the heart of what the SEC is looking to do with the liquidity rule. Now, I would imagine just like in equity markets, there's challenges in the bond and fixed income market. Let's talk about that. Sure. Well, fixed income is particularly unique in the fact that such a small percentage of the market will actually trade on a given day. Um, so it's really important to not only have trading information, but also dealer quote information as well. You got to have the breadth of the data to cover the asset classes that customers need, but you also need the depth of it as well. So if you're thinking about a market where such a small percentage actually trades, it starts to become about comparability. What other assets that are like mine so I can start to develop a liquidity profile? I always use the analogy of a house. If you're going to buy a house, you're going to look at square footage, the number of bedrooms and the bathrooms. Maybe it has a special feature, like a pool, right? But for bonds, we're talking about maybe duration, callability, um, currency, for instance. So you figure what's like mine, my instrument, and then you can also start to infer the liquidity profile where you don't have observed data. I feel like we throw around the, the word liquidity a lot. How do you determine what liquidity is? Sure. Uh, liquidity is somewhat subjective uh, and, and has different meanings depending on, on who you're asking. Um, but it's essentially, it's not discrete, it's a spectrum, right? Uh, and, and on that spectrum, it's being driven by a multitude of, under, uh, of underlying factors. So it really is multifaceted. Right. So um, like any other part of the market, data and risk are really key components to, especially when you're examining liquidity. What are, what are some ways that you work with different models within the fixed income markets? Sure. Uh, so what we're really trying to do is estimate, one, how long is it going to take for you to exit the position? And if you're going to exit a certain position of a certain size in a certain market uh, environment, how much could the price potentially move as the dealer is working your order? Right? And that's really a function of trades and trade information and the relative analytics that come along with trade information. But as I stated earlier, such a small percentage of the market trades. You're also looking at dealer uh, quoted activity. Are there dealers out in the marketplace? How many potential liquidity providers? If they're quoting, are they quoting with a size? So if there's a bid out there, how much can I trade at that, at that level at that instant? I ask uh, equity market structure experts on this, and you had mentioned that liquidity is very subjective. Do you think it's more impactful to the buyer or the seller? Because it seems as if sellers are the ones that worry about liquidity the most. Is that accurate or sure. is it the same in the fixed income market? Yes, I, I, I would agree. Um, and you know, is, is liquidity already there? Some will argue yes, it's just how much you're willing to pay for it. Right, so if you get filled, it's there, mm -hmm. right? So again, going back to you said it's very subjective. Yeah. Um, and just to wrap up for, for 2018, um, what are some challenges and opportunities that you see within the fixed income space as it relates to this and market structure? Sure, so um, from a liquidity perspective, uh, the, although the rule uh, has been delayed from an endport perspective, the actual data gathering itself um, per the original dates is still required and you should make that available to the SEC upon request. So we're going to continue along with our book of work on our side in, in, in generating analytics and reports for customers to use for their liquidity management program as well as interacting with their boards because that's going to be a piece of this. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us at MarketSite. And traders, as always, thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.